Hi guys, welcome back to another Time Traveling Kids Story Time with Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum. It's Miss Liz here with you again this month. So, did you know that not long ago there was a special holiday called Maryland Day? Do you know what Maryland Day celebrates? Yeah, it celebrates the first colonists who came to Maryland and who settled here. It's pretty cool. Now, have you ever imagined what life was maybe like for those people? It was pretty different from the life we have today. For one thing, there was no electricity. So there were no lights inside their house. If they needed light inside their house, they had to use candles. And they didn't have any of the electronic devices that we have today. There were no phones, there were no computers, there were no tablets, no games, all that kind of stuff. So, like you're watching Miss Liz here today, maybe on your TV or your computer or phone, you wouldn't be able to have any of those if you lived back then. Pretty different way of life. There were no cars, so you couldn't uh, just hop in a car and drive to the store. You had to either walk or maybe, maybe you might have a horse and you could ride a horse, but most people walked. And inside your house, there was no running water. So you didn't have a bath. You couldn't take a bath or a shower the way you do today. Uh, there was no dishwasher. You didn't have a toilet that would flush. You couldn't just go to a sink and turn on the water and wash your hands. You had to haul water up to your house from a stream or a well or a spring. So it's a pretty different way of life. Do you think you would like living like that? Yeah, I think it would be really interesting to live like that for a day but I think I'd want to come back to my life today. Well, today we are reading a story about a couple of kids who live around the time of the American Revolution and George Washington. It's called Amy, Ben, and Catalpa the Cat, and it's by Alma S. Kuhn and illustrated by Gail Owens. Amy, Ben, and Catalpa the Cat, a fanciful story of this and that by Alma S. Kuhn, illustrations by Gail Owens. Out in the garden between the holly trees, where hives were buzzing with busy honeybees, there's a straight little path to a sunny bright kitchen, and the smoke from the chimney would start your nose twitching. It seemed like the chimney was trying to say, Amy is baking her pies today. There in the kitchen, Amy was mixing sugar and spices for pies she was fixing. Amy had stopped all her spinning and mending. Now she had sweet apple pies she was tending. Red apples, green apples, big ones and small. How good they would taste when she baked them all. Ben came to the kitchen and squeezed through the door. He'd brought a big barrel that he rolled on the floor. It bumped and it bumped as it turned on its side, and Ben pointed out, with the greatest of pride, his very own marker, a big letter B, that he'd carved on the bottom for all to see. Catalpa the cat pulled straws from a broom. She darted and dashed all over the room. A funnier name there never could be. Catalpa is really the name of a tree. Sometimes they simply called her cat, but she liked Catalpa, and that's that. Da-da-rum, 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 dum-dum. Ben heard the sound of the regimental drum. He ran to the window, and what did he see? A drummer as handsome as handsome could be. His sticks hit the drum with a rap-tap beat. The drum set the pace for his marching feet. Amy had eggs on the window ledge. Ben pushed them back away from the edge. If they fell, the eggs would break, and Amy knew well what a mess they'd make. A fifer leaned on the window sill. His fingers flew as he played a trill. He said there would be a fair today. He blew on his fife and went away. Amy and Ben were excited and knew there wasn't much time to get there, too. Ben saw a sugary cinnamon bun and took it along to eat for fun. Amy and Ben were afraid they were late. They ran through the garden and opened the gate. A goose was catching some funny green bugs and pulling the grass with quick little tugs. Ben stumbled and down went his cinnamon bun. The goose quickly grabbed it and started to run. Ben chased her and tumbled around like a clown. 
She gulped and she gulped till she swallowed it down. A hen was in the garden row where Amy left her little hoe. The hen was poking where she'd seen an inchworm on a yellow bean. Amy and Ben and Catalpa hurried on to town. They saw a funny juggler jumping up and down. The juggler tossed three rings in the air. He tossed and caught them without a care. Kites twisted and turned way up in the sky, over the palace green. Children were flying the prettiest kites Amy had ever seen. A lad was sitting there on the street, without any boots upon his feet. The lad had locked his boots in a box. he lost the keys that opened the locks. Amy and Ben and Catulpa went on to Market Square. Crowds of people strolled about. They'd come to see the fair. Good food to eat, good things to buy. They saw so many things to try. Muffins with marmalade, milk in a mug, marbles and macaroons next to a jug. Nails were spilled all over the ground. A tradesman knew they had to be found. The tradesman grumbled, You're in my way. Scat, you cat. I haven't all day. An ox cart stopped near Amy and Ben. They climbed in the back and it started again. Catalpa sat on Amy's lap where she could take a little nap. A peddler in a pea-green coat walked along with a pig and a goat. The peddler shouted, Pipes of clay, pipes are the wares I'm selling today. Quills for a pen, quills for a pen, for little ladies and gentlemen. The peddler's voice was loud and bold as he told of the pipes and quills he sold. Amy's friends were singing a song as they jumped the ropes and skipped along. Ben saw a race about to start. Our three little friends jumped off the cart. Ben thought he'd like to have some fun. He chased the boys and started to run. Stop, stop. Ben had to stop right in front of the shoemaker shop. Ben had worn a hole in his shoe. Amy knew what she had to do. She fixed the hole in just a minute by stuffing a piece of her hanky in it. Down the street at Tarpley's store, they climbed the steps and opened the door. The shelves were stacked with tea and flour. To see it all would take an hour. A comb made out of tortoise shell, a toy atop a tiny bell, kettles and lanterns made of tin, and games for boys and girls to win. Amy winked at Catalpa the cat. She knew Ben wanted a tri-cornered hat. The shopkeeper shouted, Who's under my feet? Scat, you cat, get out on the street. His fist hit a shelf so hard that it shook his wife's green umbrella down off the hook. It hit the shopkeeper hard on the chin, then bounced on the strings of a violin. Out on the street, people started to crowd. Townsmen were coming. Their voices were loud, whispering, whistling, shouting a cheer. George Washington, Washington is finally here. His white horse was dancing its way down the street and stretched out its forelegs and pranced on its feet. Amy and Ben stopped clapping and waved. Catalpa sat perfectly still and behaved. Washington raised his sword in the air and spun it around with remarkable flair. He marked a big X in the dust on the ground. Now stand on this spot till my soldiers come round. Washington's hat slipped off his head. Ben picked it up and Washington said, Keep the hat, I'll give it to you. Ben was so glad. What could he do? The hat was too big and all the wrong size. But here once again, dear Amy was wise. She fixed the hat in just a minute by stuffing some yarn from her pocket in it. Ziggity zag a ziggity zero. Our three little friends had seen their hero. Amy winked and said with a sigh, If only George Washington had tasted my pie. Ben pushed his hat down on his head. He liked it so much he might wear it to bed. Amy could see Ben's wish had come true, a tri-cornered hat. Would you like one, too? A ziggity-zag, a ziggity-zat. Who ever heard such a name for a cat? A funnier name there never could be. Catalpa is really the name for a tree. Sometimes they simply called her cat, but she liked Catalpa, and that's that. The End
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that book. That cat got into some trouble, didn't it, sometimes? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make your own tri-cornered hat so that you can wear it and you can pretend that you are living and playing along with Amy and Ben. So, for this craft, grown-ups, there are a couple things you're going to need. Um, I don't have them on the table here with me, but you're going to need some paper and scissors. And then you're going to need glue, um, maybe a marker or a crayon, and then something to decorate your hat with. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I have my pieces already cut out, but you need three pieces that are this shape. So we're going to have a PDF available uh, that you can print out. Uh, and you can color your hats or you can trace them onto colored paper, whatever you want to do. Um, but you can also freehand the shape. Uh, it's not too difficult of a shape. And you need three identical pieces like this. Now, before I start assembling my hat, I'm going to do a little bit of decorating. So I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to draw around the edges of the hat to kind of make it look like it's been stitched together. Um, you can do this or you can skip this. It doesn't matter. I like it because I think it adds just a little more detail to the hat. So I'm just going to go around the edge and draw some lines. So there you can see do that in whatever kind of color you want and I'm going to do this to the other two pieces of my hat. All right now that I have lines drawn on all three of my pieces I'm going to start gluing my hat together. Now this is where if you need your hat to be a little bigger or smaller you can shift it a little bit based on how much you glue together. So the the tighter the farther in you glue it together on this piece the smaller your hat's going to be the farther out you put that blue line, the bigger the hat's going to be. And we're just going to glue these corners together. Now I'm going to rotate it and I'm just going to go to my next corner. my next piece and glue those corners together. And then do my last one. All right, and now here we have a tri-corner hat. Now, you can have your hat like this, but you can also decorate your hat a little bit. So you can put on maybe a button to decorate it. Um, you could use maybe a feather. You could go out in nature and collect something cool to put on your hat. Uh, you could use some ribbon, anything that you have. Now, for putting things on your hat, I recommend using liquid glue just because it holds a little better. I'm going to put on this button and this feather. So right here on the corner, we'll put a generous amount of glue to get both of these things glued down. Put my feather in, and then I'll put just a little bit more glue on top of that feather. And glue the button down too. So once the glue dries, I will have a great decorated tricorn hat. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next month.